pure water, pure pride, pure Jamaican. Pure water is about pure hydration. Remember to drink pure water and satisfy all your pure water needs. Pure pride Jamaican bottled water. Look for the name. It's pure water. When you go to shops, supermarkets, or any retail outlets, if you don't see it, just ask for it. The Open Gate Show, Facebook, and YouTube. Prezus has it all. It's not only analyzing the races, but you've got to check the Open Gate Show every day as interviews, previews, and information are on as well as other things. Hello, racing fan. This is Emila Bimbo Rodriguez. Listen to the Open Gate Show with Colin Blair, giving you the latest tips and reviews on the horses. Big up the number one show. Greetings, everyone. This is George Osang, listening to Open Gate Show. Number one, take a listen. The Jockeys Championship is on its earnest on the 11 race card tomorrow. The Nelson E rides 11 horses. Leading rider, Anthony Thomas, is aboard nine and is lead by five wins with only three race they left after tomorrow. No wonder tomorrow race card is very, very important for Jockey Dane Nelson. The, trainer t- the trainer's title is considered by some not being over as yet, even though champion trainer Anthony Nunes leads by approximately $2.4 million over Wayne Acosta. The two race meets that could be pivotal for either trainer on, is on the 26th and 27th of December, where lucrative purse money will be available for all classes, starting from 180 up to a million dollars, as well as the other races. Well, some of the decent horses from each camp we be, could be placed in low claiming in order to gain needed birth money value. I guess the few trainers will be waiting on those horses dropping down in to the claiming rank. It is understood by the Open Gate Show that there will be a lucrative purse of $1 million for claiming horses in the category 180,000 and they'll be going three furlongs straight in early January 2021. Maybe tomorrow, the top claimers in race one could become late on starters and await that special race. We are in a new era where things happen suddenly. Well, COVID for one, the weather pattern and so on. Guess much more things will be happening suddenly. Back to this 2020 title, there was a time when Ren Gonzalez and Arthur Sharp had a similar battle as with Wayne Acosta and Nunes some time ago. We, and only two race days were left. Everything became very interesting. Arthur Sharp won five races leaving only one race day and the racing media declared him for the title then. But on the last day, Trader Ren Gonzalez won five races as well and it ended in a nail biting finish to the last two races for which Ren Gonzalez emerged the winner. Both Dane Nelson and Wayne Acosta have to make some inroads tomorrow if they want to be more competitive with the remaining race meets so limited. Let's get on to the 11th race card tomorrow. Yeah, Lance, this is a call from Florida. Avid Ponta and see the open gate show with Colin Blair. Very informative and I depend on it 
a lot to make my selections when I um, my, my pick six and my pick nine and you know that sort of thing so um, big up Colin Blair and go and do your work and the open gate show Boom. good afternoon I'm an ardent listener of the open gate show my name is Paul Tomlinson it helps me a lot with my pick sixes and those kind of bets. I like to hear what Mr. Blair has to tell us about the horses. And it's very good. Five stars. Before I get to analyzing the Liveries card tomorrow, I can't help but to say whoever is in charge of the track and pool has again made changes that are very unreasonable. The primary one is how can anyone read those very fine prints? Oh sure, I'll be hoping another race book services soon. This new edition of the track and pool is grossly unacceptable and I'm asking the multitudes of fans as well as subscribers to this book to stop complaining to me as there are relevant offices that you should put your issues to. I have no power to rectify what's happening. One thing I can say, the outcry has started three weeks ago, but has grown louder since yesterday. Totally, totally unacceptable. As I said, 11 races, post time will be 11 a.m. 14 starters for race one. Well, it may be less, but let's go on what is on paper. It will be going five and a half furlongs or 1100 meters. It's for five levels up. Claiming tag 150,000 to 180 with five old maidens as well as six year olds who've never won two races in their lifetime. More unfortunate, 100, very light, but that's the only positive for him here. Number two, Princess Statistics gets the figure eight on for the fifth time in 72 career starts with only one third place finish attained with that equipment. She has run for 180 tag on last against comp com com competition that are not as strong as this. And again, at the same tag, coming tomorrow against Tougher. The leading rider, Anthony Thomas, is still on for tomorrow if she starts. Number four, no money friend, will be making his eighth start for the season. Only that last race three weeks ago, when closing to be second, one and a half length behind in the Arazi, who is here again, a half a furlong, when going half a furlong less than tomorrow's distance with Anthony Thomas. It's Jerome Innes on this time as Anthony Thomas has ridden several horses in this race, but has opted for number two Princess Statistics in this title that is so coveted. So let's hope that he makes the right decision. Number six, 4,000, by far the best bred horse in this race by Adore the Goal out of one fast wild cat by Forest Wild Cat. Busy at exercise for his standards, but has not done anything and has much to find. Who knows? Number seven, powerful red, 11 year old who won over this trip almost two months ago, beating better than these with this rider, Reddish Roman, when he had 108, 108 pounds, but ran a good second though. Before that, carrying 126 pounds. So this impost of 126 pounds tomorrow won't trouble powerful red that much. Number eight, Cat Rigger will be a late on starter. Number 10, Movie Star could plot on for a minor share, but only if there are two or more of the top ones not running. Number 11, Lady Carmen has speed and is handicapped to have a chance for a top three slot here. Interesting, Anthony Thomas won twice on her this season 
and but he remains a number two printed statistics. Is this a crew? Maybe. Well, let's see if Lady Carmen will be starting tomorrow. Number 12, India Razi seeking a hat trick of wins now with 126 pounds. And then Nelson, if he can duplicate that August 22nd run when drawn on the inside and did well, then he can surely complete the hat trick of wins. Number 13, Poker Star, last race four days over 10 months ago, is plagued with issues. Reports this morning to be iffy, but this trainer is shrewd when I'm thinking of, of about this horse, as Poker Star visits the, the racetrack very early in the morning on a regular basis. I need to see this one. Well, maybe he'll have to go to the Lasix barn when he's, when he's going there to make my final analysis. But the Open Gate show would have gone. So, tough luck if this one wins and I didn't inform you. Number 14, he's the relinks, gets Robert Halladine. One of these, number 12, India Razi. Number 11, Lady Carmen. Number 2, Princess Statistics. Number 7, Powerful Red. Number four, no money friend. Number 13, poker star. Maybe. Race two, eight starters. And they'll be going seven furlongs or 1400 meters this fall. Nadebert falls and up. Home is the main condition race. Number two, Sabatar may find a low exotic placing. Has been busy at exercise, not displaying anything great, but should be getting fitter. Number three, Sweet Medicine. Her second start last week was better with blinkers and first time Lasix. After her first a week before that, when she ran, well, she showed up in the early. The race won by a stable companion, but faded quickly. She got fair support in both starts. She's stretching out now against seven others who have no form, no speed, no pace. Sweet Medicine could be the speed of such a lot here, and that advantage could afford her to take pictures in the winner's enclosure if she improves, which she should. Number six, Mansour Mishore. Last two starts, he got decent support on in the tote board. This time gets first time Lasix and are pulling the scales. That could signal connections are hopeful now. Why shouldn't they? Number seven, Lambana, one of two here for trainer Stephen Todd. This one runs 70 times already and still a maiden. Tomorrow we make 71. Stable companion number eight, Black Royalty of Lambana has title chasing jockey Daniels on the board. She was only a length from Top Gear second place finish. When that would finish ten length behind Dream of Mind, a stable companion, stable mate of Sweet Medicine. Uh, if a horse that is free looking, lots of legs, lengthy horse, uh, slow, then Nelson needs all he can get tomorrow. Let's see what Brock Royal will do. This race, weird race, but let's try a sequence of I don't dream about horses, how they will perform, which is needed here. <laughs> but my order of preference, number six, Monsieur Monsieur, number three, Sweet Medicine, number eight, Brock Royalty, and for the lower exotics, number two, Savitar. Third race, 11 starters. They go four from straight or 800 meters straight. It's section one of the starters trophy. This trophy uh, normally comes much earlier in the season, but COVID has changed everything. This is a race for native bred two year olds only. It's a made of special weight. Seven debutants out of the 11 starters. First debutant, number one, on written law. Born the 18th of January, a great filly, with a full sister to another 
prosecutor and special prosecutor by Fallon Valor out of Laws of the Cat, by Law of the Sea, owned, trained, and bred by Carl Anderson, the groom, a lock for Scott. Just below medium built filly, she can run. She works in company sometimes with three or four horses. That's a plus for her. And she goes well out the gates. We'll be having Lasix and Blinkers for her debut. Number two, turn on the light. Born the 1st of March, a bay filly by Soul Warrior out of CC Colloin by Outrigger. A breeder, Everglade Farm Limited, by G owned by Jitash Groom, Itamar King. Uh, Gary Griffiths, the trainer, Akeem Pottinger will ride. Had bad experience at the off in both career starts. Number three, Honey Bunch, a debutant, born the 17th of April, a Bay Philly by Western Classic, out of Category 5 by Stormcraft. Breeder, Leroy Akins and Ryan Montique. Montague, owner, Gretford, owner, trainer, Gretford Smith, the groom, Michael Anderson, showing youth at a good size, but will need much more time. Number four, seven stars, born the 1st of June, very late, bred horse, the filly, by Easy Links, out of Google, trained by Western Classics, breeder, Victor Bright, owner, trainer, Louis Richards, the groom, Carlton Brown, Omar Walker, he gets the call. This late but tiny filly who has been showing a lot of zip for a while at exercise, especially when blinkers were affixed. She ran even on debut two weeks ago on the minimum round course. With that lesson and now in blinkers as well as Omar Walker taking the reins projects unexpected better showing. I must add she is lightning fast out the gates. Number five, Avila. Born the 8th of March, Chester Philly, and was a full sister to Tuna Ciliata. By traditional, out of red gold, by Wizard of Gold. Breeder, Wilbert Bagwandine, owner, R. Daly, M. Reynolds, I. Rowe, and Stephen Todd. The groom, Granville Singh. In training for a long while, this Stephen Todd trainee, which will be who will be ridden by Kieman McGregor, and even though very busy at the starting gates in the mornings, only a minor share is expected. She will be getting blinkers. Number six, show curling, born the second of March, a Bay Philly by Perfect Curling, or a short cure by Alke. Breeder Michael Bernard, owner Micros, groom George Daly, who has two horse, who grooms two horses here. Robert Aldean, ride for Gary Sobrati. The most experienced horse in this race, showed speed in all five career starts against the best set of two years yet. Could use all that schooling to fight out the finish against the other top, against the other 10 horses. Number seven, a debutant, Quiet Boss, born the 24th of May, a Bay Cole by Burn Identity, out of Quiet Grandeur, by Quiet American. Breeder, Ian Passard, owner, Stefan Naran Singh, Rajendra Punai, Don Webby, Anthony Nunes, Trains, Robert uh, Christopher Mamdine Ride, not yet ready for a win, or even a top placing. But in time, let's see. Number eight, another debutant, Curlins Kawatha, born the 29th of April, a Bay Colt, who is half to Dracarys and Carson Sinfedo. This Colt is by Perfect Curlin or of Kawatha by Easy Relinks, Breeder or in Valley Estates, owner, Micros, the groom, George Daly, the second horse for groom George Daly, veteran groom. Gary Sabrati is the trainer. Ahmed Robles will ride. Another who will need time. Number nine, Abby, a debutant. Born the 23rd of April, a Bay Philly, with half the fearless Abby and Cassius King. This filly is bred not on giant by Abby Kadabi, by Go Zappa, Breeder, 
and to Richard Clare, owner of Oakley Farm, the groom, Nicholas Barnes, Jordan Barrett, the apprentice, will ride for Christopher Parr. Small filly who shows speed at, at exercise, but not enough to deliver a win at this time. Number 10, Sudden Flight, April 8 born, Big Colt, who is half to capture my ship, Fashion Mister, and Royal Assault. Mm, all speed horses. Uh, he's bred natural selection by making jaw by Elisius, Breeder Wyatt 1985 Limited, owner, title chasing owner, Carlton Watson, the groom, Theo Campbell, Anthony Thomas, the leading rider, rides for Wayne Acosta, who is in second spot in the trainer's title. Display much youth in the mornings and is related to some very speedy horses. We'll fight this out. We'll have Lasix and Blinkers. Number 11, Chandra's Law, born the 14th of March at Chestnut Philly, who is half the Prince Charles. This horse is by Sensational Slam, by the Dam She's Spectacular, by St. Appeal, Bread Ham Stables Limited. Owner Stefan Naran Singh, Rajanda Punai, and Don Webby. This makes two horses that they have in this race. The groom, Sylvester Moody. Then Nelson rides for Anthony Eunice. Looks nothing like Prince Charles. Not saying he, Prince Charles is a better looking horse. I think Chandra's Law is a better looking horse. She's tall and has good length. Doesn't look like a sprinter to me as she has long loping strides. However, she can surely run, but has to be that good to win at four furlongs on debut. We'll be getting Lasix and Tung Tai. Expect these top three to fight this race out. Number 10, Sudden Flight. Number 11, Chandra's Law. Number one, Unwritten Law. Hey, two laws. Number six, Short Curling. Could use uh, experience and take this race. Number four, Sudden Stars. Must not be taken lightly. We go to race four. And we have 11 starters again. Four furlong straight or 800 meters straight. Well, it's actually section two of the starters trophy. Eight debutants. First is number one, the seal, born the 26th of March, a Bay Philly by Burn Identity, out of television by Image Maker, owner, breeder, trainer, David Lee Finn, the groom, St. Patrick Shaw. I like this filly, but she's going to need this race. Number two, Silver Soul, born the 28th of March, a Bay Philly by Silver Medallion out of Tejano Symphony by Tejano Run. Breeder, Argyle Farms Limited, owner, Lawrence Fremantle and Michael Durr. The groom, Paul Isaacs, Romaro Spencer, rides for trainer Lawrence Fremantle. Run twice already, but we'll definitely need this, as I think this horse will take some time before she starts throwing her work. Number three, another debutant, do not play with music. Mm, what a name. Born the 7th of May around Philly by Midnight Hawk, out of due process by Law of the Sea. Breeder, Light Kong, Norman Reed, and Stanley Walker are the owners, Fitzroy Folks, the groom, Dane Dawkins, right for Gretford Smith. Neat little Philly with one of two hair for first time Stallion, Midnight Hawk, and uh, Midnight Hawk is a highly thought of stallion here in Jamaica. And let's see, as a matter of fact, he has another one that is slated to run in in uh, in this race, in number nine, Silver Hawk. So let's hope connections of the stallion all the best. We need some more mares and good horses in Jamaica. Uh, because the claiming system is one, but the other races, that's where everything is at. All right, back to the race. Uh, this don't play, don't play with magic. Took some time to show her value at exercise. Being around for a very long while, I'm expecting a fair display tomorrow, but I'm not expecting her to win. Number four, another debutant, an interesting name, horse. John Crow Jeff. Born the 11th of February, a Bay Colt by natural selection out of Sweet Your Rock, Sweet You Rock rather, by He's the Real Thing, 
Breeder Jeffrey Mordecai, owner Elizabeth Acosta, and Jeffrey Mordecai, Philip Parchment, rides for Wayne Acosta. As Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. Jeffrey Mordecai uh, is one of w Wilmer's High School best ever student and presently an astute gentleman. I'm sure he will smile hearing me quote Shakespeare's appropriately, appropriately regarding this cold's name. This cold can run. Although it's four for long straight, uh, he's quick enough and alacrity out the gates is a huge advantage. That is if he has that. I think he, he does. Is one of the aces from trainer Wayne Costa sleeves. Now he has lit the fire to see if he can overhaul Anthony Yunus, of which it won't be easy. This gold gets tongue tie, figure eight, and Lasix. Number five, let's get it on. Born the 3rd of March, Bay Philly, with a field sister to Corazon. This is by Stormcraft, out of my beat by Human Instinct. Owned and bred by Lake and Farms Limited, Spencer Chong. Trains, Robert Halladin rides, Michael Reed, the groom. Interesting, the rail birds have this one to be fighting out the finish. She would surprise me if she wins. Not say she can't run second or third, but if she wins. Anyway, we'll be getting first time Lasix. First time tongue tie, rather, after two career starts. Still without Lasix. Let's get it on. Number six, Amy the Butcher. Born 11th of April, a great filly by Deputy Glitter, out of Asia's Dream by Eve the Real Thing. Breeder, owner Oliver Gray, Keith Johnson, the groom, Patrick Fong, trains, apprentice Jordan Barrett Wright. Tiny filly, who is the, most, is the most experienced here, but will find a few are superior. Number seven, Kataba, a debutant, born the 2nd of May, a chestnut filly by Lan Tame, out of Tooting Cat by Birdie Mark. Breeder, O'Neill Phillips, owner, Judy Racing Stables, Anthony Thomas rides for uh, Patrick Lynch. Akeem Johnson is the groom. Small filly who has shown use, but has to leave the gates sharply to have a top three chance. Number eight, another debutant, Broken Light, born the 21st of March, a bay cold with a half the heart of a champion and a gringo. Sire Liquidity Dam Hard Trob by Sir Lal Bahadur, Breeder Wise 95 Limited, owner, trainer Gary Griffiths, groom Durant, Durant Nugent, useful coming along in his training and uh, could run good enough, but not for a top three slot. Number nine, Silver Hawk, another debutant. This is uh, February 21st, bred around Philly with half the top gear. This silver orc is bred Midnight Orc by Miss Emily by Legal Process. Christopher Wellington, he breeds and owns this horse. Well, he bred and owns this horse. My English, pardon me. Glenville Grace is the groom. Dan Nelson, interestingly, gets the call here. Gary Sobrati, he's the trainer. Another Midnight Orc progeny who is improving each week, gets Lasix for its debut. And I think the horse will run in the top three. Don't like him to win though. Number 10, Alimony, February 23rd. That's when he was born, Chestnut Cold by legal process out of Kesha Baby by Crucial Child. New Blue Limited is the breeder, Ajax Braun, the owner, Tafari Wright. The groom, Omar Walker, gets the call for trainer Anthony Nunes. Alimony showed speed last week in that race, going five furlongs round, and, but displayed greenness. Should benefit from that run. Don't be off this horse chances, seeing that Dane Nelson, the stable rider for Anthony Nunes, and needing every winner to win the, the Jockey's Championship is off, this, is off this horse. He rode it on debut, but instead he's on Silver Arc. Uh, 
There are glitches that can happen at times, and this is one. Number 11, Beautiful Brown, a, debit, a debutant born the 9th of April, be filled by Stormcraft out of one stop by Royal Minister. This is a half uh, to Father Pickens. Winston Tracy is the breeder and owner, Juno Small, the trainer, Paul Francis, the rider, Javon Smith, the groom, very small filly who has shown some use but is not expected to pose any problems here. Will, advisor, figure eight and lay six. Number four, John, John Crow Jeff is my selection from number 10, alimony, good exactor. Number three, don't play with music. Number nine, silver orc, both progenies of the stallion midnight orc should fight out third and fourth. Number five, let's get it on, could be part of the lower exotics. Race five, seven and a half furlongs or 1500 meters, nine horses were declared for children up. Optional claiming 350,000 with five year olds who've never won three races in their lifetime. Number one Royal Aviator claimed from the last race four weeks ago when he broke a bit slow from the gates and found number six here, Subby, not for catching, finishing one and a half length second to that one. Omar Walker again rides for new connections at the same tag. Number two, smart tradition down in claim after closing to get third, three and a half lengths away, going one and a half far less than tomorrow's journey. It's a good while he hasn't ventured this far. Really going for a low claim after running that well against none of the five years and up, none of the four for the shrewd, capable and very talented horseman Patrick Lynch. Number three, Band of Gold, claimed when he won at this level on November 1st, beating over the hill horses. Uh, had one start since in the higher tag and is back down to 350,000 claiming with tongue tie off, of which she already won without. It's coming to run. That is what is loudly whispered since this morning. Number four, Smooth Criminal, Interesting, he's dropping this low in the claiming ranks. Had shown nothing in last eight starts. He's at his favorite trip, well, his approxi favorite approximate trip, and it's aptly named <laughs> Smooth Criminal. So be careful. It's Christmas. Number six, Subby showed surprise speed four weeks ago, winning winning half a furlong longer than to Morris trip. Having number one Royal Aviator and number nine Nala the Bushman behind, Trader Darby is doing very well, especially of late, teaming with veteran jockey Paul Francis. Number seven Art Ice uh, ran only seven times yet this season, so I'm iffy on her winning chances. Number eight Mirabilis very consistent at exercise of late that's a huge plus her best can give her a chance for the top spot one easily four weeks ago in the lower tag between a very soft set of horses then nelson again will be riding remember he's riding in each of the 11 races Robles will be going some kilos of weight for Dan Nelson. Number nine, Alice Bushman, much fitter now and will be closing from a far off. Unless there is a total collapse up front, his winning chances on paper looks tough. However, trainer Michael Marlow uh, always does well in December and January. So maybe Nalas Bushman with Philip Parchment can improve. Number six, Sabi. Number eight, Mirabilis. Number one, Royal Aviator. Number two, Smiley Tradition. Number nine, Nala Bushman. That's my order of preference. Race six. For four years and up, who have never won three races in their lifetime, attract 14 starters. They'll be going seven for 1,400 meters. Number two, Princess Lauren. Stretching out with Dane Nelson. 
she ran third in the Thornbird Stakes at this exact distance to be behind the Costa pair of Lady Blue and Princess Annie. Trainer Pearson has been doing, well, there's two Pearson. Trainer Robert Pearson, pardon me, is doing very well with his small string of horses and congratulations to him. Number four, El Gringo looking good when seen at the beach. He's okay off the bench, but facing some fitter ones here. Number five, Reggae Gone Grammy, coming off a two and a half month break. Seen in great shape, loves it fresh, ran well on last. That's the 3rd of October, going six and a half furlongs, when Prominent took up the lead, leaving the two furlong marker, and faded a bit to be half a length second to Beach Boy in a very fast time. Retains the leading rider once again. That's Anthony Thomas. Number six, Inspired Miracle. I'm inspired by expecting a miracle each day. Maybe tomorrow, if I'm still on in the regular six, you could win and make me or maybe a close friend of mine a deserved loan winner. <laughs> well, let's see. I own a wage a very small amount for the pick six. That's why maybe I'm not catching one. Number seven, Baby Star, one of two hair for Connections, owner Rising Star and trainer Johnny Wilmot has been, hasn't been living up to expectation, but this tiny filly has been training for this distance since last race. That last race, she was held off the pace and she came on running on well with number eight here, Raw Liquid, finishing fifth by three and a half length as Raw Liquid finishing sixth by three and a half length. It was a head bob for that six pace, for fifth, fifth and sixth pace pot. Number eight, Raw Liquid, well, I've already mentioned her with Baby Star and this one ran well over a mile on the 13th of November, a very competitive mile, I should say, when leading what kept on to be fought by one and three quarter length to win Wings Choice, Blood, Sweat and Tears with her. And Ali has been looking in good shape in the morning. Number nine, Blood, Sweat and Tears looks much better of late, uh, looking much sharper, that's what I should say. And it's getting back a rider who last won aboard her, that's Phil, la, last one aboard him rather, that's Philip Parchment. But then Ladapi disappointing since privately sold, number 11 blind fate, going seven furlongs, she can relax easier. But even though working very well, I don't fancy her winning chances. Regardless, I have very strong faith. Hey, she can win though, so bear that in mind. Number five, we're going Grammy. Number nine, Blood, Sweat and Tears. Number six, Inspired Miracle. Number two, Princess Lauren. Number eight, Raw Liquid. I'm expecting one of those to win. Seventh race, level start of five from straight, our thousand meters straight is four trails and up, a claim and tag six hundred to six hundred fifty thousand. First of three here, dropping in claim for owner breeder Carl Anderson, that's number one Twilight Lady. Um he's dropping for a tag, yes, but has it all to do from this unfavorable unfavorable in a post. Could still hit the board. Number two, Splendid Vision, fresh and fit filly, who is taper light. Another that should hit the board in, in the lower exotic spot. Number five, Raindrops, another Carl Anderson horse here. Saw her Monday morning, in, well, looking very smooth, canting out the straight. Well, she has only run one, one race. Uh, I'm beating not much, but I really like how this horse looked on Monday. Well, Monday is Monday. Tomorrow is tomorrow. Far apart. Number six key witness, fit and consistent mayor who won on, uh, on going six and a half furlongs, but now facing a decent set of speedier horses. Number seven, City Council, last of three straight, uh, straight drops by trainer Carl Anderson. 
um, especially the Philly, who has a, a, a decent chance to win, having won on the 7th of November, going five and a half furlongs in a time of 106 and 4 fifths, beating Coppertone and Elitis. Number eight, Lord Ashton, won one of four races with the figure eight, which is off tomorrow. If he can duplicate that race on the 30th of August, going five furlongs straight, and he closed to get within one and a half length second to capture my ship in a fast time of 58 and 3 fifth, then he should, he, he has a chance to win, especially the leading rider gets the call in Anthony Thomas. The Manan Cartel had good form up to late October this season. Love this course and is expected to come with a turnaround and have a say in the outcome. Number 11, Nuclear Thunder, Fast Cold, who has been weakening in the last furlong for trainer Ryan Darby, four times now. That's unusual for this trainer. This Gallin won two races over this route in the, in the past. Now down in claim, well drawn, must be a very dangerous horse. Top four, number 11, Nuclear Thunder, number seven, City Council, sub-11 or 11-7 for some rate players. Number eight, Lord Ashton, number nine, Cartel, and for the low exotic, Splendid Vision, number two. The eight race, 10 starters, they go two turns, nine from 25 yards or 1,820 meters, it's four trails and up, imported maiden, tri imported trails and up maidens, and native bred trails who've never won two races. Number one, my time now will be closing. Number three, Gambler, one of many here who will be off the place, pace and should close. There's not much pace in this race. I should remind you, there's only one leader on paper. Number four, Princess Livy, looking better in condition of recent. Number five, let him fly, run very well in the only time venturing two turns. That was on the 13th of November when looking threatening in the stretch, but could not pass the out of class Tomahawk, finishing second one and a half length behind that one in a time of 156 and a fifth for this trip, which is very good. Looking very different and working well, this let him fly for trainer Anthony Nunes, apprentice with Shane Newton, he gets the call. Number six, I'm a citizen, had two career starts, both both at four furlongs straight, and that's recent. If pay is 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 federal light, my tongue is twisted with this one, and it's stretching out two turns. But on paper, she ain't shown anything. But paper is paper. Well, I am just kidding around. But at times you kid around, and you get hurt. Anyway, number seven, Sun City, flatters to receive and will be flying in the end if focused. Kind of like how she had been carrying herself this week at the exercise. Uh, her ears, uh, for the first time to me, has been flickering and she, she looks very happy. Number eight, three toppings, run twice over this journey and both times she runs well, uh, winning one and failed by half a length to old one of a kind who finished well in the classics. Uh, to be, be to, to to lose by a half a length. That was on the first. In, that was on the first of August this season. Working well and could use their loan pace factor to her advantage for Anthony Thomas to extend his lead or to hold on to that five length lead. I must remind you, it's not only the trainers and jockeys' title is at stake, but the owners and grooms championship as well. Carlton Watson lies three million plus behind Michael Bernard of Micros and has a cargo of horses penciled to try being victorious as Wayne Acosta, Anthony Nunes, Anthony Thomas rather, <laughs> and himself for the respective categories. Number eight, three toppings from number seven, Sun City, it could go either way. Number five, let him fly, should be part of it. Number three, Gambler will be closing. Number four, Princess Lizzie will be prominent and could hold an exotic spot. Ninth race, 
12 starters for Nader Bread shows only it's the main condition race goes two turns again. Well, this is section two of the previous race. Number two, another cookie, very busy in the morning, goes two turns for the first time. Uh, three carriers starts now with first time and, and will be getting first time Lasix for his fourth. Should run his best race yet, but I don't expect a win. Number nine, no identity, unlucky over this distance and last. So, it's the 28th of November when losing by half a length. Uh, should have won, but circumstances caused him to fail. The leading rider stays. Not sure I was impressed with how he looked this morning on the exercise track. This no identity. Number four, Commandante Lunar ran improved in second career start when finishing third, four and three quarter lengths to triple seven and she boom after breaking slow lay out the gates going six and a half furlongs on December 6th two, oh, two weeks ago it's stretching out this time and it's interesting to see what this one will do number five law of a boy very consistent over very distances already run third at this trip and facing a set he should be able to fight this out with number seven commissioner I misunderstood the source, and especially in that last, well, in that last race that he ran over the five from straight course. Another who is stretching out around two turns, well-bred horse um, that was born here in Utah and is aimed ready for a top display, even though bred for this distance. Will be in front for a while, who knows, may, su may surprise me, surely. Nah, I don't think so. Number nine, Protologist gets first time figure eight on to improve his poor showings. Number 10, it is now, will be closing. Number 12, Sweet Venetia. The only race she showed anything was the second place finish, four and a half length, than favorite is at this distance. We'll be getting first time cheek pieces on. Rake Pills will try number eight sweet toppings in race eight. And for the double, sweet Renisha here. Number three, no, I don't like the source. I didn't like how he worked this morning. So I'm going to take number five, Lava Boy, over number 10, it is now number three, no identity. Number 12, sweet Renisha, a possibility to win. Number seven, Commissioner. Could use his class and well i should say expected class and get a minor share weakening in the latter part boy i really going out on the limb on this commissioner stating how he will run in the race and i'm not a part of the connection but anyway so be it we come to the penultimate race 10 is for trilling up Optional claim tag, 250,000 with five rows who's never won two races in your lifetime, as well as six year olds and up who's never won four races, seven furlongs or 1,400 meters. Number, we have 13 starters. Number one, Batido de Mundo, jockey Philip Parchment could help get the source doing a better. Number three, Bay Commander, busy exercise and looking in good condition, but has a habit of late. And when these old horses get into a negative habit, it normally stays. Well, let's see. Number four, original train consistent in two starts since the summer and is light for a top five expectation. Number five, unbreakable nine-year-old who almost won 25% of his career starts, 100 starts, 24 wins earning approximately $12 million. The most claimed horse the last three years at Cameron's Park and ran well for each connections who claimed this one. Good chance to win. Number six, Al Clente. Uh, how can this horse got beat by number nine, Muscatoon by two and a half length? Being allowed, being two and a half length, being allowed five pounds then by Mosquitoon. Now, El Cliente, who
who finished behind Musketool is allowing that one seven pounds. Hmm. Lots of